Today we're going to create a light activated sound player with ESP32, the DYHV20T MP3 board, and two outdoor PA speakers. I figured since I'm the only one in the neighborhood who doesn't have a rooster, I gotta improvise. In this video we'll use the ESP32, the DYHV20T MP3 player module, a 5 volt DC converter, a TPA 3116D2 amplifier board, a couple of outdoor PA speakers, a 10K ohm resistor, and some jumper wires, a 3.5 millimeter audio cord, a light dependent resistor, an SD card, a power supply, a couple of lever wire connectors, a capacitor, a type C connector, and some DC power connectors. I'm using two compact PA horn speakers, and each are rated for 20 watts RMS and 50 watts max with an 8 ohm impedance. And these horns are good for clear mid-range focus audio, and that's going to be speech, alarms, or other sound effects. But perhaps you're not familiar with RMS, that stands for root mean square, and in audio it refers to true continuous power that a speaker or an amplifier can handle over time without damage or distortion. So a speaker that's 20 watts RMS and 50 watts peak, that means that it can safely play 20 watts continuously, and at the same time it can handle those 50 watt spikes, but just for a brief moment. And this is important because it tells you what the speaker can reliably handle, and it also helps you match the amp to a speaker properly. Especially for outdoor PA systems where headroom is important, you want your amplifier RMS rating to be one and a half to two times the speaker's RMS rating so that you can get the best sound and prevent your speakers from being damaged from clipping. Now clipping is when your amp can't deliver the full signal anymore so it cuts that waveform flat which creates distortion and can damage your speakers. Since the amplifier I'm using today is 50 watts per channel, I'm going to back off a little bit on the voltage and volume to prevent clipping. In the past, I've always used an amplifier that provided more power than the speakers will ever need, but honestly, if your speakers aren't distorted and cracking and popping, it's probably going to be fine. Now, these horns have a sensitivity of 100 decibels at just 1 watt, so they get loud very fast, even at modest power. And I'm using the TPA 3116D2 amp and a 19 volt power supply. And that'll give me plenty of clean volume without risking speaker damage. Each horn has a frequency range of 500 hertz to 5 kilohertz, so you won't get those real low bass sounds or the real high pitches, but it's done really well with the mid-range vocals and instrumental music. Now these horns are made with ABS plastic. They're lightweight and they have adjustable brackets so that you can aim the sound wherever you want it. And because they're 8 ohms, they're widely compatible with most amplifiers out there. For amplification, I'm using the TPA 3116D2 based digital amplifier board. It's a compact Class D stereo amp that can deliver up to 50 watts per channel into 4 ohm speakers, or 30 watts per channel in 8 ohm speakers, which we should still be able to use if we lower the voltage. This board supports a wide voltage input from 4.5 to 26 volts. And today I'm using a 19 volt power supply and that should deliver plenty of clean volume while keeping things efficient over 90% so that it runs cool even at high volume. I do like the fact that it comes with over voltage, short circuit, thermal, and DC fault protection. So even if something does go wrong, it won't fry my entire system. Let's go ahead and look at the setup here. Here's my amplifier board. As you can see, I have my 3.5 millimeter audio cable plugged in the front there. In the back, in the middle two screw terminals, I'm using 19 volts from my power supply. And then the two screw terminals to the left and to the right are the left and right speakers. For the MP3 player board, you can see that the dip switch configuration is one and two off, three is on. The 3.5 millimeter audio cable is connected to my amplifier board. The TX and RX pins are connected to pins 20 and 21 on ESP32. The busy pin is white and it's connected to pin 12 on ESP32 and then ground is connected to ground. You'll also see that we have our 19 volt power supply connected to a 5 volt DC converter and this is to power the ESP32 board. you also notice that the light dependent resistor has one pin connected to 3.3 volt. The other lead is connected to pin 1 and ground using a 10k resistor. you also notice I'm splitting my voltage using wire lever connectors. It's 19 volts in and 19 volts out split three ways. Here's the code that I'm using, but it can be tweaked a couple different ways so that it can fit your own project. At line 8, you can change this number to match the number of tracks you have on your SD card. You can lower this value if the song isn't playing in bright enough light. You can raise it if it triggers too often under ambient light. 
If you want to play tracks in order instead of random, you can change lines 59 and 60 to the code that I've provided here on the right, and comment line 44, or delete that line altogether. Since the DYHV20T allows you to set the volume in the code, you can add this function to line 36 just before setup, and then add this line to your setup section. So that's just a few ways you can modify the code. You will receive the code and diagrams if you're on the email list. So the idea behind this was to create a waterproof box, put this outside, and when the sun comes up, it would play whatever track I have on there. I'm going to do like a rooster crowing in the morning. I think I think, I think that would be great for the neighbors. It would really create a sense of community and I'd bring everybody together. This isn't the only video I'll do. I'll update it when I make the box. But uh, for now, I'm going to mimic the sun with a flashlight. Yeah, that's pretty loud. That would get me out of bed. I've only got five, so you may hear the same one twice. I think that one's my favorite. I downloaded these songs from freesound.org. Just check the description for the link if you're interested. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful, be sure to like the video by clicking the thumbs up. Also, if you enjoy this type of stuff, consider subscribing. And I'll see you again with another video.